Today let us look at the anatomy of a typical Cordova project. I will create a project, ionic project by using ionic start project name. I will give it a name called techno tip. Let's use tabs template and of course we'll be doing ionic 2 project. We'll be using ionic 2 framework. Remember I'll be using this same project for most of my video tutorials so that I won't end up wasting your time by showing how to start a project in each of my tutorials. Okay, it was fast. So we have our Ionic 2 project here with some bunch of files and folders which we will take a closer look shortly. Hooks folder is not for beginners so let me skip it. Inside node modules we have some of the core libraries for regular expressions and for array manipulations and libraries like angular library and ionic libraries itself which we could which we we can use inside our ionic project so these plugins are cordova plugins specific to our project if we need to utilize some of the native functionalities like your your phone's camera and other things media we could install those specific Cordova plugins and make use of it in our project. Resources folder is where we store our splash screen and icons for our project. Now let me open config.xml file. If you are from Ionic 1 background, you already know what's present inside this file. Nevertheless, I'll show you. Most of the things related to the app and the author are self-explanatory here your email address, URL, apps description and the name. One important thing is the ID because this shows up in your Play Store URL once you upload your app to the Play Store. And other configurations like your your apps display mode etc. Let's come to that when I build the application for the real mobile devices. Let's also take a peek look inside this package.json file. It has some build information here. I'll just close this up and let's have a look at dependencies. These are the initial dependencies our application depends upon. Form for form elements, HTTP to fetch resources from external source, storage, the ionic angular library, the ionic native library, ion icons, etc. And the initial plugins our application needs. Remember we are using TypeScript so whenever you see a file with an extension TS it's, uh, it's because we are writing the code in TypeScript. Now let's take a look at SRC and www. SRC is where we can find our raw uncompiled code. Inside SRC we have our page components, application root components, static files etc which gets transpiled, compiled, minified and stored into this www folder. If you edit the files inside www folder it simply gets overwritten during the build process. So let's get inside SRC where the real action takes place, where we write the code. Assets. Inside this we have sta we store static files like images etc. Inside pages. Let's take a look inside home folder. We have a template file .ts file which has class definition and a style definition file. So for every page you create you will need to add another folder. For example if you want to create a login file, login page you will need to create a folder called login or any other name you prefer and store the login template, class file and a style definition file. Well Ionic will take care of that and I'll show it to you in, in a future video. Themes folder has style definition which is applicable for the entire application. We can change some of the variables and customize the whole look and feel of the app. 
I'll show that later in another video. So the app folder is where the root, root components of our application is located. I'll open up this app.module.ts. This is the entry point for our application. Remember, this is the entry point for our app. So every app, so whatever components we write, we need to import it so that we can use its service or its output or whatever. So every application has a root module that will essentially control the workflow of rest of the application. And this component that is my app class is from the component app component. Whatever components we write, we need to specify it inside declarations as well as entry component and providers are in, in this block we list all of our services data services if you are from ionic one you already know what is services and factory we list all the factory and services here so we have our first component that is my app which is present inside app.component let me open that for you we are using it because we have imported it here so this is the first component which gets loaded in our app it's simply an empty shell for other components to load into we don't have much things here we just set the root page here that is the tabs page which we have already imported here just remember whatever you need to use you need to import it before and then specify it inside app.module.ts file and we also have a index.html file as you might already have guessed this has some minimal configuration settings and it imports links to some of the javascript files but ionic looks up for this tag to start the application that is ion app tag so that's it for now if you didn't understand anything in this do not worry i'll explain every bit of it i just showed you so that you be familiar with some of the default for files and folders present in every other ionic 2 application Going forward, I'll, I'll show you some simple programs and you will understand the significance of most of these files and folders in coming days. Please share this video with your friends and visit the link present on your computer screen right now and share this link with your friends on Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. And please do not forget to like this video on YouTube. Thank you.